Welcome back to Turf Talk, Hall of Fame edition. Vance, we'll certainly get into our decisions for the Hall of Fame as you and I both hold a vote, but uh, for now a survey of the landscape is the nominating committee announced who will be on the ballot. A uh, few surprises to my eye, but I was certainly glad to see Gio Ponte, a horse I thought should have been on last year. Yeah, two-time grass champion, champion older male also is certainly a deserving uh, Hall of Fame nominee. I was slightly surprised there's only three thoroughbreds up for grabs. <laughs> Must have been a down year, maybe five, six years ago of sorts, but uh, we've got three worthy uh, nominees on that list and then uh, five jockeys and three trainers. So seemingly a kind of a condensed list this year and the top four get in. Yep. Uh, well, as I said, we'll get into who we're actually ultimately going to vote for. You don't have to vote for four. You don't have to vote for any. Uh, so we'll see how we decide to divvy it up. Uh, tip my hand a little bit. Gio Pani certainly won. I'll be strongly considering. Uh, on the jockey front, don't want to get overly political, but uh, again, I'm personally disappointed. No Pat Valenzuela, uh, who to me is one of the absolute very best. Uh, to sit or perch or whatever you want to say in a saddle. Uh, obviously some off the track demons, but a few of the names on the ballot this year have those as well. I don't really understand the, the judgment calls in that regard. Yeah, Pat in his prime was a terrific race rider, coast to coast, one uh, most, uh, most notably known for riding uh, Sunday Silence back in the day. He did a lot of great work when he was well enough to ride on a regular basis in Southern California. And I'm, I'm with you, he should have been in the Hall of Fame a long time ago, irrespective of his off the track uh, troubles and problems. So, uh, you know, and the fact that, he, you know, he hasn't been on the nomination list at all, I don't think, uh, you know, speaks to the, uh, you know, the issues some of the people on the nominating committee obviously have with his uh, career and candidacy. So I hope that changes because I think he's worthy of induction. Yeah, for me, uh, certainly familiar with the name when I broke into the business. Uh, Sunday Silence, a uh, big one, but I was at the 2003 Breeders' Cup uh, where he wrote Adoration to an upset victory and just textbook p -Val. I mean, he put the horse in the best position to win uh, from the start, and I mean, he just, <laughs> no one could, could catch her. So uh, many rides like that in his career, and certainly uh, as we come along in this discussion process with the Hall of Fame, we'll give the due to the ones we actually want in that are nominated, but thought now was the right time to mention. I personally would like to see him on the ballot. Yeah, P. Val's kind of an old business kind of uh, jockey that you want to have inducted possibly before some of the newer, better, younger faces that we've seen in the last decade, 15 years. And I would put Craig Pred on, on that list as well. He's up for nomination again this year in the Hall of Fame. He probably isn't going to get in just because of the competition, but he's another one that did some great work back in the 80s and 90s. and like p -Val, and I hope someday he'll get in. All right, well, uh, as I said, we'll discuss those as uh, once the ballots are out and we get through there. Um, we'll wrap up on a somber note from Hall Thoroughbred Hall of Fame uh, to a Hall of Fame in the harness uh, industry, but really a, a stalwart uh, of any breed that has to do with horses, but uh, said goodbye to Sam McKee today. Uh, a, a real blow. It was a really bad blow for harness racing and horse racing in general. Uh, in my mind, this is no offense to any race callers out there, but I truly think he was probably the best, regardless of breed. Uh, if you go back, if, I wouldn't necessarily call him an old school announcer, but he's old school in the sense that you could just listen to his race calls and get an absolute perfect picture of where a horse was anywhere on the racetrack. He showed great enthusiasm. Uh, I, I listened to him a lot out here at the Red Mile in Lexington during the Grand Circuit meet, and he went out with a bang last fall on the closing day. He called the world record, always be Mickey 146, the fastest harness race ever in racing history, and he called the trot, trotting triple crown winner on the same afternoon. So, like you said, uh, Sam McKee, uh, in, gone too soon at age 54 is going to be terribly missed. Yeah, and for me, uh, growing up in Ohio, uh, certainly familiar with his calls at the Meadowlands and the Grand Circuit at the Red Mile, uh, but he was also the simulcast voice of the Little Brown Jug, uh, and just uh, as, as I said in, in a tweet, just there wasn't a part of the game he touched where he won't be missed. Uh, I've been looking for some thoroughbred footage. I know he's called thoroughbred races. He was the voice of uh, Detroit Racecourse. I've come up empty so far. 
uh, but uh, we'll we'll find one. We know they're out there. Yeah, I looked at looked for some Detroit footage myself because I think uh, back in the day ESPN used to do uh, annual broadcasts of the Michigan Mile, mm -hmm. and I was hoping that you know Sam McKee's calls on would be on one of those old episodes, but they just haven't been uploaded yet. So hopefully they will in the future. Uh, one last note on Sam McKee, you know. Me being such an admirer of his work, I know I probably saw him walking around the Red Mile Grandstand for years and mm -hmm. years, and I just never had the gumption to walk up to him and say, hi, appreciate it, admire your work, love your work. Uh, I know you and I went to the Little Brown Jug at Delaware last fall. We know he was on duty that day. We didn't get around to go see him, and now that opportunity has passed. So this is a, you know, a reminder for me and to others out there you know, if there's anybody in the racing field or any walk of life that you admire, whose work you admire, don't hesitate to maybe stop them and say hello. Mm -hmm. Tell them what, how you feel. They'll feel good about it. You'll feel good about it. And uh, you won't have any regrets. All right. No question. Uh, great advice. And hopefully when we're back next week for Turf Talk, I have a happier topic to discuss. But certainly wanted to, to this, give uh, everyone out there uh, our appreciation for Sam and the life he led in the industry. Uh, we'll certainly miss him here and beyond, and uh, until next week.